Hey everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my summer 2018 book haul. This book haul contains 24 books, over 19 authors and 3 genres. So hopefully it should be a nice varied book haul with plenty of things that people will find interesting. It certainly interests me. And the first three books, and for the record I'm not going to say too much about any one book because otherwise this video will be horribly long. And frankly I haven't read most of them so I don't know too much myself. But those first three books are books four, five and six in the expanse by James S. A. Curry. The three books that comprise books four, five and six are Cibola Burn, Nemesis Games, and Babylon's Ashes. I have read these three books, I actually reread the first three, then I've re then I've read these three. I really like this series. They've made it into a television series originally created by sci-fi then they axed it and now I believe Netflix took it up it's a big science fiction space opera series following one crew and I really enjoy it the next book that I bought was Two Likes the Lightning by Ada Palmer now I can't remember too much about the plot of this so in a moment I will read the back synopsis of it but the reason that I know um, I have complete faith in that this book will be extremely good is the fact that Rachel Kalanadi likes this book. This is the first book in what will be a four book series eventually. The third book is out, the fourth book will be out within the next year. Frankly if Rachel likes it then I have faith that it will be brilliant because Rachel generally is accurate about these things. And I'll read the back. The year is 2454. Humanity has engineered a hard won golden age forged in the aftermath of a bitter conflict that wiped both religion and nation state from the planet. Seven factions or hives have co governed the world for three centuries. Their rule fueled by careful censorship, oracular statistical analytics, and technological abundance. I really don't want to say that bit again. Convicted for his crimes, celebrated for his talents, Mycroft Kanna is the indentured instrument and confidant of some of the world's most powerful figures. When he is asked to investigate a bizarre theft, he finds himself on the trial of a conspiracy that could shatter the fragile world order. But Minecraft has his own secrets. He is conceding a much greater threat to the Seven Hives, a world card no degree of statistical analysis could have prophesied. This threat takes the unlikely form of a 13 year old. For how will a world a Spanish god deal with a child who can perform miracles? So yeah, Rachel likes it, that's all I need to know. It will probably be very, very good. The next book is Autonomous by Anna Lee Newitz. Now, I can't remember too much about the plot of this again, like the previous book. Various booktubers have greatly enjoyed this and thought it had some interesting ideas. And it does sound like my kind of book. So, hence I just thought, you know, I was pretty confident with buying it because I thought I'd enjoy it. And I'll read these synopsis. Earth, 2144. Jack is an anti-patient scientist turned drug pirate, fabricating cheap medicines for those who can't otherwise afford them. But her latest drug hack has left a trail of lethal overdoses. Hot on her trail is an unlikely pair. Aloysius, a deadly military agent, and his indentured robotic partner, Paladin. As they race to stop Jack, they begin to form an unlikely and commonly close bond that neither of them fully understands. And underlying it all is one fundamental question. Is freedom possible in a culture where everything, even people, can be owned? I know this doesn't, um, the synopsis is quite a little bit different and a little bit wrong compared to the part of the book. I know it's all, so it sounds as though it's more technology based than it is. It actually focuses on character interactions, I believe, more than the actual technology side or vice versa. So. But it's, I know this is quite well thought of already, and I wouldn't be surprised if this wins, you know, awards of various kinds if it hasn't already. Next up is not just one book, but actually four, and that is The Chronicles of St. Mary's, the first four books. The four books are Just One Damn Thing After Another, and this is actually the first one I've read at the moment. The other three I haven't read yet. A Symphony of Echoes, A Second Chance, and a trail through time. Now, the Chronicle Chronicles of St. Mary's series is a science fiction series 
which focuses on time travel. The St. Mary's Institute is one where it's for historians to investigate the path, but rather than merely going to archaeological digs and such, they have the ability to time travel and actually go back and experience it firsthand. But going back uh, in, in time and looking at it directly can lead to problems. And the new character in the first book, which is the one I've read, um, is a woman who she thinks she knows what she's getting into, but obviously she really doesn't. And things go disastrously wrong in a really spectacular way. It's much darker than I thought it was, and I really enjoyed it, frankly. And I am obviously I bought four books, so I'm pretty confident that I'll like them. The next book is The Margaret by Sherry S. Tepper. Now, I talked about this book last week in my um, reading wrap up for July, as I've just read it. I've already read this with Rachel Canada again, and I like this book. It has some interesting ideas. It's one character gets split through various choices that uh, she has to make into seven. But it's not parallel world, it's actually one world. It sounds curious, and it is. I really enjoyed this book, and I will be happy to be reading more books by Sherry S. Tepper with Rachel in the future. So, all of those books were in just one shopping trip. Now, the next three books are three books that I got for my birthday, which was at the start of June. And the first of which is This is the Way the World Ends by James Morrow. And yes, this is one of the Yellow Boy masterworks. For the record, um, my Amazon uh, wish list is made up of only science fiction masterworks, the Yellow Boys, because it's just simpler adding a big pile of them there. I don't buy them that often anymore myself, but slowly over time people keep buying them from that wish list, so my Amazon, uh, my SF Masterworks collection is growing. This one sounds quite interesting, and I'll read it out. When tombstone in engraver George Paxman is offered a bargain, he doesn't hesitate. His beloved daughter gets an otherwise unaffordable survival suit to protect her from radioactive fallout and all George has to do is sign a document admitting that, as a passive citizen who did nothing to stop it, he has a degree of guilt for any nuclear war that breaks out. George signs on the dotted line. And then the unthinkable happens. So, yeah, he signs a contract and then the thing that he signs the contract for happens. Obviously, you know, it's a nuclear war, you know, Armageddon type thing, hence recover. And... This sounds quite interesting, a bit mad, and I think I quite like this because it just sounds quite interesting to me. The next book happens to also be a science fiction masterwork, this time Mockingbird by Walter Terry's. And again, I don't know too much about this, but I will read off. In a dying world where humans are drugged and lured by electronic police, where there is no art, no literature, and there are no children, where some would rather burn themselves alive than endure. God, that's not bad. Spoyforth is the most perfect machine ever created, but his only desire is the impossible to cease to be. Yet there is hope in this bleak, depressing time, hope in the passion and joy that a man and a woman discover in love and in books, hope for the future, hope even for Spoyforth. It sounds like it's quite dark, but also amusing because of this robot, which is frankly... One of the reasons why it sounded quite interesting to me because you know, it's got a, a robot that may or may not be amusing. It may be kind of a depressive robot. You know, it may, makes me think of obviously um, Marvin from Hitchhikers, kind of. And all those masterworks, you know, so it's just easy to keep getting masterworks at this point because generally overall masterworks are working out pretty well for me. The third book that I got for my birthday is not a science fiction masterwork. And actually, this is something that. That really did not affect in the slightest, and that is Sleeping Beauty the boy Stephen King and Owen King, who is indeed his son. Now this is I think a horror novel, or at least going by the fact it's Stephen King with Owen King his son, I would assume so. Um something is happening strange in this uh world. People are falling victim to some kind of sleeping virus, and then if you wake them up Something strange happens to these people and it only affects certain women. And it's strange mystery, strange goings on. And it's Stephen King just being Stephen King. You know, it's, at this point, people know what to expect from Stephen King. 
well, as most people do it on less experienced with Stephen King. I haven't read that many. This is a fairly uh, fat Stephen King. Some of them are, some of them aren't. This should be an interesting one, especially considering he wrote it with his son. It could be a little bit different. We'll see soon enough. This next set of books is also from another shopping trip to the same um, bookshop as before, which happens to be Waterstones. And that first book from them happens to be After Atlas by Emma Newman. Now this is the uh, second book in the Planetfall universe. I have read the first and indeed the third book and I thought I'd better read the second because you know it would make logical sense. Although the books aren't direct sequels, although they do sort of interlink pretty heavily. This one is quite an interesting one. This one, unlike the other two books, sounds like a crime has gone on. The main character is called Carlos Marina, Marino and he has to solve this uh, crime, or at least alleged crime, um, of a dead body found in a hotel room. It has something to do with the Atlas uh, mission, which is a deep space mission to colonise another world. It's involved, it's probably intricate, and if there's anything like the other two books I've read by Emma Newman in this universe, probably going to be extremely good because I really did enjoy the other two books. The next book is The Drowned World by J.G. Ballard. Now this is a science fiction book. It has the theme of climate change and this is a world where climate change has affected it quite drastically. It's specifically um, based around London and London has now changed due to global warming, high sea levels and such. And one character, Dr. Robert uh, Kevins, he is trying to explore and find out certain events. It's only a thin book, so I'm basically paranoid to say too much and I don't know too much more myself. I don't want to know too much more, too much more but they still sound interesting and so far I've been really enjoying Ballard. He's a classic science fiction author who I tend to think of as sort of literary science fiction because his books are quite wordy and very well thought out and the science fiction tends to be more of a location as such rather than you know, they're not like science fiction in terms of spaceships and such. Generally, they're more like, they have a science fiction theme, but they're actually almost literary fiction to me. Then I saw Born by Jeff Vandermeer, and I had to pick it up. One thing, the cover I thought was really interesting. It's got two, uh, you know, upper and lower jaw, about to bite down on the title of the book, Born. All I know about Born, or all, all I can remember about Born, is it's something to do with a ruined city, the main character is called Rachel. I, I happen to remember that name rather well because one of my favourite people is called Rachel, you know, Colonado on Booktube. And she finds some sort of life form in this ruined city one day when she's scavenging for supplies. And she names this life form Born. And this is about her interacting with this life form. And other people obviously would quite like to get a hold of it and investigate it. Some people obviously are just a bit more like thugs about it and just want to maybe kill the thing because it's not normal and it's apparently quite meant to be quite good and the born in question this life form is meant to be apparently really interesting and a really good character despite being uh, alien and fairly um, I don't think it actually speaks at all during the book so it should be interesting to see how born interacts with all characters next I saw the Rise and Fall of Dodo, or D-O-D-O, -D -O, as it is actually an acronym, by Neil Stevenson and Nicole Galland. Now, I'll read the back synopsis for this. When you interfere with the past, there's no telling what you might find in the future. In 1851, London's Crystal Palace hosts the Great Exhibition, showcasing the rise of technology and commerce, and alongside it, the decline of magic. Once powerful, now mere myth. Years later, Mel Melisandy Stokes, linguistics and languages expert, and Tristan Lyons, shadow govern government agent, will rediscover magic and all its power, bringing about the creation of the Department of Diachronic Operations, DODO of the title. Dodo's mission is clear to develop a device that will send their agent back in time to keep the magic alive and alter the course of history. 
this sounds strange and it definitely sounds like a Stevenson book. I've been wanting to read something else by Stevenson for, for some time but I haven't got anything else left by him unread. But rather than choosing one of his books, you know, one of his classic Neil Stevenson books, I thought I'd choose the latest book that he's written, which this happens to be. So this, I know he's quite popular on booktube in the last few years, or at least amongst the people that I know on, the, on here, and it's done quite well and it's got some quite interesting ideas, so I'm quite interested to get to this in the very near future. The next two books are a duology, and those are The Abyss Without Dreams and A Night Without Stars, both by Peter F. Hamilton. Now, as you know, or you can probably tell from the fact I've got every other book by him up there, I am a big fan of Peter F. Hamilton. I have read every book by him now, other than these two, which happens to be the last two books that he wrote, although he does have a new one coming out later in this year, 2018, which I obviously will read in time. The only flaw with these two particular books in question, so far, I mean, I haven't read them yet, is the fact that all the other um, books by Hamilton that I've got are in the uh, by Pan, and they've got a particular cover design. These were also Pat by Pan, but some idiot at Pan decided to change the spine design to stripey thing. I don't like stripey spine when the others are not stripey. This is really irritating. But uh, you know, I did. I wanted to buy these in my bookshop because I was hoping there'd be a version of these without the stripey spine, but there isn't. So I'm just going to put up with these looking very strange next to the other books. You know, all the rest have got normal pictures and these have actually just got um, horizontal stripes. Uh, this is the uh, Chronicle, Chronicles of the Fall of Duology. This is set in the same universe as the Void Trilogy, which is a trilogy of these that I absolutely loved. Actually, probably the, that is probably my favourite three books of Hamilton's. So I'm curious to see where these go. I already know, I don't want to say anything about them particularly, um, where this goes in terms of that universe. I do know where it fits in in terms of the history. This is science fiction and it's space opera and I'm predicting that I will like it because Hamilton is a good author for me personally. Next up, I brought A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers and I've already read this book and talked about it in last week's uh, monthly wrap up video so I'm not going to say anything now but I really liked it, it's science fiction it's second book in the Wayfair series and I fully enjoyed it and I would very heavily recommend this series although read the first book The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet first whilst this is not a direct sequel as such it will make a lot more sense and it will give away spoilers to the first book if you don't if you read this first so I would recommend them in order I really would the next three books are from another shopping trip to the same bookshop again to Waterstone and this was sort of on the spur of the moment frankly I didn't actually plan to buy books on that particular day but it's me in a bookshop so I did and the first one is The Fell Sword by Miles Cameron this is the second book in his five book series which I started recently um, a few months ago, in fact, I probably read the first one with Sam from that Sam's Nonsense. I did love the first book, but it had some interesting ideas, and the writing was compelling enough that I did want to continue on with it. So when I saw this in the bookshop, I was like, should I buy it? And I was like, well, yeah, you know, the first book was compelling enough, and it was interesting enough to warrant me to continue with the series. So I am quite interested to see where uh, Cameron goes with this series. The second book is... A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. This is also the first book in a five book series, I believe. The fifth book is now out. So, hence when I saw it, I was like, ah, it's a finished series. If I like it, which I predict I will, then I can then read the other four books in fairly close succession as soon as I get hold of them. This is one where it's written in the form of, um, sort of journal entries, I believe, from the main character. And she's a dragon expert. She kind of like a Darwin type character where she's going off exploring, finding new creatures. They happen to be dragons though. So she's documenting them, exploring what it means, what they are, how, how they function. I don't know much more than that, but it sounds curious and 
Yeah, I don't read about dragons that often, actually. Because, you know, I read more science fiction than fantasy, so I'd be interested to um, read an alternative for train of thought on dragons. The penultimate book in this book all is Black Man by Richard Morgan. Now, honestly, this actually wasn't the book I was planning to buy. I wanted to buy Altered Carbon by Richard Morgan, which they uh, is currently quite popular because they've made it into a Netflix television series. However, they didn't have um, Altered Carbon in this particular edition line. They have the sequel to Altered Carbon, the second book two and three, in this uh, cover design, but not the first one for some reason. So I can get the Altered Carbon, but I'll have to buy it online, and then the other two books I can get. So Black Man, though I know this also has won the um, Arthur C. Clarke Award in 2008 for Best Novel, and I also am trying to read some award-winning science fiction books. This sounds like an interesting one. This deals with, unsurprisingly, with a vice. I mean, the actual, it's called Black Man, and the main character happens to be a black man. It deals with vice, obviously, in a very significant way. He also deals with other types of persecution and sort of bad judgment as well. And people, you know, people are uh, discriminated against for what they are, you know, the genetic engineering. And this is a world where, but obviously, race, uh, racial tension still exists, and indeed, it's actually even worse than it is now, which is frankly an achievement. And also, uh, people have issues with people being genetically modified and things, I believe. And somebody escapes. And I'm not really sure t too much about this book, and I don't want to know too much. It sounds interesting. I do you want to read something by Richard Morgan, so, you know, it's an easy choice. And the final book that I got, I actually received this for free from the author, is an independently published book, and that is Palum by L. L. McNeil, or Lauren, either, as her actual first name is. Now, I've known Lauren on uh, Twitter for several years now, in fact, I can't remember how I first sort of bumped into her on Twitter, but, you know, it's one of these things. I read her first novel in this universe, Rhoda, uh, a year and a half ago, I think it was now, and I really, really enjoyed it. Actually, it's one of my favourite fantasy books that I'd read in quite, in quite a few years. So, this is book two in what will be a six book series, and I'm already looking forward to books three, four, five, and six. Hopefully, you know, she'll uh, write them fairly quickly. Well, obviously, I'm aware of writing novels are not exactly a quick point there. Um, yeah, so this is one that I've been looking forward to. It continues the storyline started in Maroda. I don't want to say too much now, but I did do a review of Maroda previously, which um, I will link in the description box below. And I will be reading this, and I probably will be reviewing it. I'm not guaranteeing I'll review it because I can't always find the words to review things. Sequels can be a bit tricky to review, but I'll see what I can manage. Yeah, you know, I'll try to review it, but I can't guarantee it. Anyway, with that said, that is it for this uh, book haul. Normally, I will try and hold up the stack of books, but yeah, I'm not going to try and hold up this stack because it's 24. I'll just drop them all over the floor. I don't know how I'm going to do the thumbnail for this because that's a lot of books. Anyway. If you've read any of these or would like to, then please leave a comment and we can have a talk about them. If you have any suggestions on books you think I might like to read, then again, leave a comment and we can have a talk. Because I'm always interested to get into new authors, new genres and you know, new ways of thinking. All of my social media links, as well as links to anybody that I mentioned, can be found in the description box below. And with that said, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.